Act 3. Same as in first act, but gap in center has been filled with briars or branches of some sort. Mary Duell, blind again, gropes her way in on left and sits as before. She has a few rushes with her. It is an early spring day. Mary Duell, mournfully. Oh, God help me. God help me, the blackness wasn't so black at all the other times that it is this time. And it's destroyed I'll be now. And hard set to get my living working alone when it's few are passing and the winds are cold. She begins shredding rushes. I'm taking short days will be long days to me from this time. And I sitting here not seeing a blink, or hearing a word, and no thought in my mind but long prayers that Martin Duell get his reward in a short while for the villainy of his art. It's great jokes the people will be making now, I'm thinking. And they passing me by, pointing their fingers maybe and asking what place is himself. The way it's no quiet or decency I'll have from this day till I'm an old woman with a long white head and it twisting from my brow. She fumbles with her hair and then seems to hear something. There's a queer slouching step coming on the road. God help me, he's coming, surely. She stays perfectly quiet. Martin Duell gropes in on right, blind also. Martin Duell, gloomily. The old devil men married Duel for putting lies on me and letting on she was grand. The devil men the old saint for letting me see it was lies. He sits down near her. The devil men Timmy the Smith for killing me with hard work and keeping me with an empty, windy stomach in me in the day and in the night. Ten thousand devils men the soul of Molly Byrne, Mary Duel nods her head with approval, and the bad, wicked souls is hidden in all the women of the world. He rocks himself with his hand over his face. It's a lonesome I'll be from this day. And if living people is a bad lot, yet Mary Duel herself, and she a dirty, wrinkled looking hag, was better maybe to be sitting along with than no one at all. I'll be getting my death now, I'm thinking. Sitting alone in the cold air. Hear them in the night coming and the blackbirds flying round and the briars crying to themselves. The time you'll hear one cart getting off a long way in the east. And another cart getting off a long way in the west. And a dog barking, maybe. And a little wind turning the sticks. I'll be destroyed sitting alone. And losing my senses this time the way I'm after losing my sight. For it would make any person afeard to be sitting up here in the sound of his breath. He moves his feet on the stones, and the noise of his feet, when it's a power of queer things, do be stirring little sticks breaking and the grass moving. Mary Duell half sighs, and he turns on her in horror. <laughs> Till you take your dying oath on sun and moon a thing was breathing on the stones. He listens towards her for a moment, then starts up nervously and gropes about for his stick. I'll be going now, I'm thinking. But I'm not sure what place my stick's in. And I'm destroyed with terror and dread. He touches her hand as he is groping about and cries out. <gasps> There's a thing with cold living hand on it sitting at my side. He turns to run away, but misses his path and stumbles in against the wall. My road is lost on me now. Oh, merciful God, set my foot on the path this day, and I'll be saying prayers morning and night, and I'll be straining my ear after young girls, or do any bad thing till I die. Mary Duell, indignantly. Let ye not be telling lies to the Almighty God. Martin Duell. Mary Duell, is it? Recovering himself with immense relief. Is it Mary Duell, I'm saying? Mary Duell. There's a sweet tone in your voice, I'm not her for a space. You're taking me for Molly Byrne, I'm thinking. Martin Duell coming towards her, wiping sweat from his face. Well, sight's a queer ting for an upsetting man. It's a queer ting to think I'd live this day to be fair in the like of you. But if it's shaken I am for a short while, I'll soon be coming to myself. Mary Duell. You'll be grand then. And it's no lie. Martin Duell, sitting down shyly, some way off. You've no call to be talking. For I've heard your tell as blind as myself. If I am, I'm better in mind I'm married to a little dark stump of a fellow looks the fool of the world. And I'll be better in mind from this day the great hullabaloo he's after making from hearing a poor woman breathing quiet in her place. And you'll be better in mind, I'm thinking, 
what you see a while back when you looked down into a well, or a clear pool maybe where there was no wind stirring and great light in the sky. Mary Duel, I'm minding that, surely. For if I'm not the way the liars were saying below, I seen a ting in them pools put joy and blessing in my heart. She puts her hand on her hair again. Martin Duel, laughing ironically. <laughs> well, they were saying below I was losing my senses, but I never went any day the length of that. God help you, Mary Duel. If you're not a wonder for looks, you're the maddest female woman is walking the countries of the East. Mary Duel, scornfully. You were saying all times you'd a great ear for hearing the lies and word. A great ear, God help you. And you think you're using it now. If it's not lies you're telling, would you have me think you're not a wrinkled poor woman is looking the like of three scores, maybe two scores and a half? Mary Duel. I would not, Martin. She leans forward earnestly. For when I seen myself in them pools, I seen my hair would be grey or white maybe in a short while. And I seen with it that I'd a face would be a great wonder when I'd have a soft white hair of fallen around it. The way when I'm an old woman, that it won't be the like of me, surely, in the seven counties of the East. Martin Duell, with real admiration. You're a cute, thinking woman, Mary Duell, and it's no lie. Mary Duell, triumphantly. I am, surely. And I'm telling you a beautiful white-haired woman is a grand thing to see. For I'm told when Kitty Bowne was selling poteen below, the young man itself would never tire to be looking in her face. Martin Duell, taking off his hat and feeling his head, speaking with hesitation. Did you think to look, Mary Duell? Would there be a whiteness the like of that coming upon me? Mary Duell, with extreme contempt. On you, God help you? In a short while you'll have a head on you as bald as an old turnip you'd see rolling around in the muck. You need never talk again of your fine looks, Martin Duel, for the day of that talk's gone forever. Martin Duel. That's a hard word to be saying. But I was thinking if I had a bit of comfort the like of yourself, it's not far off we'd be from the good days went before. And that'd be a wonder, surely. But I'll never rest easy thinking you're a grey, beautiful woman and myself a pitiful show. I can't help your looks, Martin Duel. It wasn't myself made you with your rat's eyes and your big ears and your grizzly chin. Martin Duel rubs his chin ruefully, then beams with delight. There's one thing you forgot, if you're a cute, thinking woman itself. Your slouching feet, is it? Or your hooky neck, or your two knees is black with knocking one another. There's talking for a cute woman. There's talking, surely. Mary Duel, puzzled at the joy in his voice. If you'd anything but lies to say, you'd be talking to yourself. Martin Duel. Busting with excitement. <laughs> I've this to say, Mary Duel. I've been letting my beard grow in a short while. A beautiful, long, white, silken, streamy beard. And you wouldn't see the like of it in the Eastern world. Ah, a white beard's a grand thing on an old man. A grand thing for making the quality stop and be stretching out their hands with good silver and gold. And a beard's a good thing you'll never have. So you may be holding your tongue. Mary Duel, laughing cheerfully. <laughs> well, we're a great pair, Shirley. And it's great times we'll have yet, maybe, and great talking before we die. Martin Duel. Great times from this day, with the help of the Almighty God, for a priest itself would believe the lies of an old man who would have a fine white beard grown on his chin. Mary Duel. There's the sound of one of them twittering yellow birds to be coming in springtime from beyond the sea. And there'll be a fine warmth now in the sun, and a sweetness in the air, the way it'll be grand thing, we'll be sitting here quiet and easy, smelling the things growing up and budding from the earth. I'm smelling the furs a while back sprouting on the hill. And if you'd hold your tongue, you'd hear the lamps on greening. Though it's near drowned, they're crying as with the full river making noises in the glen. Mary Duel listens. The lamps is bleating, surely. And there's cocks and laying ends making a fine stir a mile off on the face of the hill. She starts. Martin Duel. What is that sounding in the west? A faint sound of a bell is heard. Mary Duel, it's not the churches, for the wind's blowing from the sea. Martin Duel, with dismay, it's the old saint, I'm thinking, ringing his bell. Mary Duel, the Lord protect us from the saints of God, he's coming this road, surely. Martin Duel, tentatively, will we be running off, Mary Duel? What place will we run? Martin Duel, there's the little path going up through the sluice, 
If we reached the bank above, where the elves do be grown, no person would see a sight of us. If it was a hundred yeomen were passing itself. But I'm afraid after the time we were with our sight, we'll not find our way to it at all. Mary Duell standing up. You'd find the way, Shirley. You're a grand man, and the world knows that finding it away if there was a deep snow itself lying on the earth. Martin Duell, taking her hand. Come a bit this way. It's here it begins. They grope about Gap. There's a tree pulled into the gap. A strange thing happened since I was passing before. Mary Duell. Would we have a right to be crawling in below under the sticks? Martin Duell. It's hard set I am to know what would be right. And it's a poor thing to be blind when you can't run off itself and you fear in the sea. Mary Duell, nearly in tears. <laughs> it's a poor thing, God help us. And what good will our grey hairs be itself? If we have our sight the way, we'll see them falling each day and turning dirty in the rain. The bell sounds nearby. Martin Duell, in despair. He's coming now, and we won't get off from him at all. Mary Duell. Could we hide in the bit of briars growing at the west part of the church? I'll try that, Charlie. He listens a moment. Let to make haste. I hear them trampling in the wood. They grope over the church. Mary Duell. It's the words of the young girls making a great stir in the trees. They find the bush. Here's the briar on my left, Martin. I'll go first. I'm the big one, and I'm easy to see. Martin Duell, turning his head anxiously. It's easy heard you are. And will he be holding your tongue? Mary Duell. Partly behind Bush. Come in up beside of me. They kneel down, still clearly visible. Do you think they can see us now, Martin Duell? I'm thinking they can't. But I'm hard set to know for the lot of them young girls, the devil save them of sharp, terrible eyes, would pick out a poor man I'm thinking and he lying below hid in his grave. Let you not be whispering sin, Martin Duell. Or maybe it's the finger of God they'd be pointing to ourselves. It's yourself is speaking madness, Mary Duell. Haven't you heard the saints say it's the wicked do be blind? If it is, you'd have a right to speak a big, terrible word would make the water not cure us at all. What way would I find a big, terrible word, and I shook with the fear, and if I did itself, who know rightly if it's good words or bad words to save us this day from himself? They're coming. I hear their feet on the stones. Saint comes in on the right, with Timmy and Molly Byrne in holiday clothes. The others, including Matt Simmon and Pat Ruid, as before. Timmy. I've heard tell Martin Duell and Mary Duell were seen this day about on the road, Holy Father. And we were thinking you'd have pity on them and cure them again. I would, maybe. But where are they at all? I'll have little time left when I have the two of you to wed in the church. Matt Simmon, at their seat. There are the rushes they do have lying round on the stones. It's not far off they'll be, surely. Molly Byrne, pointing with astonishment. Look beyond, Timmy. They all look over and see Martin Duell. Timmy. <laughs> well... Martin's a lazy fool to be lying in there at the height of the day. Let you get up out of that. You were near losing a great chance by your sleepiness this day, Martin Duell. <laughs> the two of them's in it, God help us all. Martin Duell, scrambling up with Mary Duell. What is it you want, Timmy, that you can't leave us in peace? Timmy, the saints come to marry the two of us. And I'm after speaking a word for yourselves, the way he'll be curing you now. That if you're a foolish man itself, I do be pitying you. But I have a kind heart. When I think of you sitting dark again and you after seeing a while and working for your bread. Martin Duell takes Mary Duell's hand and tries to grope his way off right. He has lost his hat, and they are both covered with dust and grass seeds. People, you're going wrong! It's this way, Martin Duell! They push him over in front of the saint near center. Martin Duell and Mary Duell stand with piteous hangdog dejection. Saint, let you not be afeard, but there's great pity with the Lord. Martin Duell. We ain't afeard, Holy Father. Saint, it's many a time those that are cured well of the four beauties of God lose their sight when a time is gone. But those I cure a second time will go on seeing till the hour of death. He takes the cover from his can. I've a few drops only left of the water. But with the help of God, it'll be enough for the two of you. And let you kneel down now upon the road. Martin Duell wheels round with Mary Duell and tries to get away. You can kneel down here, I'm saying. We'll not trouble this time going to the church. Timmy, turning Martin Duell round angrily. Are you going mad in your head, Martin Duell? It's here you to kneel. Did you not hear his reverence and he's speaking to you now? Saint, kneel down, I'm saying. 
The ground's dry at your feet. Martin Duell, with distress. Let you go on your way, Holy Father. We're not calling you at all. Saint, I'm not saying a word of penance or fasting itself. So you've no call now to be fearing me. But let you kneel down till I give you your sight. Martin Duell, more troubled. We're not asking our sight, Holy Father. And let you be walking on and leaving us to our peace at the crossing roads, but it's best we are this way, and we're not asking to see. Saint to people. Is his mind gone that he's no wish to be cured this day? And looking out on the wonders of the world. Martin Duell. It's wonders enough I've seen in a short space for the life of one man only. Timmy. Is it he see wonders? Patruid. He's making game. Matsiman. He's maybe drunk, Holy Father. Saint, severely. I never heard tell of any person wouldn't have great joy to be looking on the earth, and the image of the Lord is thrown upon men. Martin Duell, raising his voice by degrees. That's great sights, Holy Father. What was it I seen my first day but your own bleed and feet, and they cut with stones in my last day but the villainy of herself that your wedding God forgive you with Timmy the Smith? That was great sights, maybe. And wasn't it great sight seeing the roads when north winds would be driving and the skies would be harsh and you'd see the horses and the asses and the dogs itself maybe with their heads hanging and they closing their eyes to me. There's talking. Matt Simmon. He's right maybe. It's lonesome living when the days are dark. Molly Byrne. He's not right. Let you speak up, Holy Father, and confound him now. Saint, coming close to Martin Duell and putting his hand on his shoulder. Did you never set eyes on the summer and the fine spring in the places where the holy men of Ireland have built up churches to the Lord, that you'd wish to be closed up and seeing no sight of the glittering seas, and the firs is opening above will soon have the hills shining as if it was fine creels of gold they were, rising into the sky. Patruid, that's it, Holy Father. Matt Simmon, what have you to say now, Martin Duell? Martin Duell, fiercely. Isn't it finer sights ourselves have a while since we sit in dark, smelling the sweet, beautiful smells do be rising in the warm nights and hearing the swift flying things racing in the air? Saint draws back from him, till we be looking up in our own minds into a grand sky and seeing lakes and broadening rivers and hills are waiting for the spade and plow. Matt Simmon, roaring laughing. <laughs> it's songs he's making now, Holy Father. Patch, it's mad he is. Molly Byrne, it's not, but how lazy he is, Holy Father, and not wishing to work for a while since he was all times longing and screeching for the light of day. Martin Duell, turning on her, if I was, I've seen my fill in a short while with the look of my wife, and of your own wicked grin, Molly Byrne, the time you're making game with a man. <laughs> my grin, is it? Let you not mind him more, Holy Father, but leave him in darkness, if it's that it's best fitting to the blackness of his heart. Timmy. Cure Mary Duel, your reverence, who is a quiet poor woman, never said a harsh word, but when she'd be vexed with himself, or with the young girls do be making game of her below. People. That's it, cure Mary Duel, your reverence. Saint. This is a little use, maybe, talking to the like of him. But if you have any sense, Mary Duel, kneel down at my feet, and I'll bring the sight into your eyes. Martin Duel, more defiantly. You will not, Holy Father! Would you have her looking on me and saying hard words to me till the day of my death? Saint, severely. If she's wishing her sight, it isn't the like of you will stop her. To Mary. Kneel down, I'm saying. Mary Duel, doubtfully. Let us be as we are, Holy Father. And then we'll be known again as the people as happy and blind. And we'll be having an easy time with no trouble to live, and we get in half pence on the road. Molly Byrne. Let ye not be raven. Kneel down and get your sight, and let himself be taken halfpence if he likes it best. Timmy, if it's choosing a willful blindness you are, there isn't any one will give you a hapworth of a meal, or doing the little things you need to keep you at all living in the world. Matt Simmon, if you have your sight, you could be keeping a watch that no other woman came near him at all. Mary Duell, half persuaded. That's true, maybe. Saint, kneel down, for I must be hastening with the marriage and going my own way before the fall of night people, all together. Kneel down, Mary. Kneel down when you're bid by the saint. Mary Duell, looking uneasily towards Martin Duell. Maybe it's right they are. And I will if you wish it, Holy Father. She kneels down. 
Saint takes off his hat and gives it to someone near him. All the men take off their hats. He goes forward a step to take Martin Duell's hand away from Mary Duell. Saint to Martin Duell. Go aside now. We're not wanting you here. Martin Duell pushes him away roughly and stands with his left hand on Mary Duell's shoulder. Keep off yourself, Holy Father, and let you not be taken my arrest from me in the darkness of my wife. What call have the like of you to be coming in here when you're not wanted at all, and making a great mess with the holy water you have the length of your prayers? Go on now, I'm saying, and leave us this place on the road. Saint, if it was a seeing man I heard talking to me the like of that, I put a black curse on him would weigh down his soul till it'd be fallen to hell. But you're a poor, blind sinner, God forgive you, and I do not mind you at all. He raises his can. Go aside now till I give the blessing to your wife, and if you won't go with your own will, there are those standing by will make you surely. Martin Duell, pulling Mary Duell. Make me, is it? Well, there's cruel hardship in the pity of your like. And what is it you want coming for to break our happiness and our rest? Let you rise up, Mary, against them and not heed them any more. Saint, imperiously to people, let you take that man and drive him down on the road. Matt Simon. Come on now, Martin. Come on. Patchwood. Come off now from talking badness to the holy saint. Martin Duell, throwing himself down on the ground, clinging to Mary Duel. I'll not come. I'm saying and let you take this holy water to cure the blackness of your souls today. Mary Duel, putting her arm around him. Leave him easy, holy father. When I leave her live dark all times besides him, then be seen in new troubles now. Saint, you've taken your choice. Drag him away. People, that's it. Lift his head. They carry him to right. Martin Duel, screaming. Make them leave me go, Holy Father. Make them leave me go and let you have pity and forgive me for my heathen words. And you may cure her this day, Holy Father, and do anything that you will. Saint to people. Let him be if his senses come to him at all. They put him down. Martin Duell shakes himself loose, feels for Mary Duell, sinking his voice to a plausible whine. You may cure herself, surely, Holy Father. I wouldn't stop you at all, and it's great joy she'll have looking on your face. But let you cure myself along with her, the way I'll see when it lies she telling, and be looking out day and night upon the holy men of God. He kneels down a little before Mary Duel. Saint, speaking half to the people. Men who are dark a long while are thinking over queer thoughts in their heads, aren't the like of simple men who do be working every day and praying and living like ourselves. And with that, it's my part to be showing a love to you who would take pity on the worst that live. So if you've found a right mind at the last minute itself, I'll cure you, if the Lord will, and not be thinking of the hard, foolish words you're after saying this day to us all. Martin Duell, listening eagerly. I'm waiting now, Holy Father. Saint, with can in his hand, close to Martin Duell. With the power of the water from the grave of the four beauties of God, with the power of this water I'm saying that I put upon your eyes. He raises can. Martin Duell, with a sudden movement, strikes the can from Saint's hand and sends it rocketing across stage. People with a terrified murmur. Will you look at what he's done? Oh, glory be to God, there's a villain, surely. Martin Duell stands up triumphantly and pulls Mary Duell up. If I'm a poor, dark sinner, I've sharp ears, God help me. And it's well I heard the little splash of the water you had there in the can. Go on now, Holy Father, for you're a fine saint itself. It's more sense is in a blind man, and more power maybe than you're thinking at all. Let you walk on now with your own worn feet, and your welted knees, and your fasting holy ways have left you a big head on you, and thin, pitiful arms. People, go on from this. Saint looks at Martin Duell for a moment severely, then turns away and picks up his can. Martin Duell, we're going, Shirley, for if it's right some of you have to be working and sweating the like of Timmy the Smith, and a right some of you had to be fasting and praying and talking holy talk the like of yourself, I'm thinking it's a good right ourselves have to be sitting blind, hearing the soft wind turning around the little leaves of the spring and feeling the sun. And we not tormenting our souls with the sight of the grey days and the holy men and the dirty feet is trampling the world. 
he gropes towards his stone with Mary Duel. Matt Simmon. It'd be an unlucky, fearful thing I'm thinking to have the like of that man living near us at all. Wouldn't he be bringing down a curse upon us, Holy Father, from the heavens of God? Saint, trying his girdle. God has great mercy, but great wrath for them that sin. People, all together. Go on now, Martin Duel. Go on from this place. Let you not be bringing great storms and draughts on us, maybe from the power of the Lord. Some of them throw things at him. Martin Duel, turning round defiantly and picking up a stick. Keep off now, the yelping lot of you, or it's more than one maybe will get a bloody head on him from the welt of my stick. Keep off now, and let you not be afeard. For we're going on the two of us to the towns of the south, where the people will have kind voices maybe, and we won't know their bad looks or their villainy at all. Mary Duel, that's the truth, surely. And we'd have a right to be gone, and it's a long way itself where you do have to be walking with a slow of wet on one side, and a slow on the other, and you go on a stony path with a north wind blowing behind. Men, go on now, get on from this place. Martin Duel, keep off, I'm saying. He takes Mary Duel's hand again. Come along now, and we'll be walking to the south. For we've seen too much of everyone in this place, and it's small joy we'd have living near them, or hearing the lies they do be telling from the grey of dawn till the night. They go. There's a power of deep rivers with floods in them where you do have to be left in the stones and you go into the south. So I'm thinking the two of them will be drowned together in a short while, surely. Saint, they have chosen their lot, and the Lord have mercy on their souls. He rings his bell. And let the two of you come up now into the church, Molly Byrne and Timmy the Smith, till I make your marriage and put my blessing on you all. He turns to the church, procession forms, and the curtain comes down as they go slowly into the church. Curtain. And that is the end of The Well of the Saints. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, You might have noticed that my recording sounds a little bit different. I am now currently in Ireland, and uh, I am sitting in my room with my mattress turned up on its side and having the mic directly in front of the mattress so that it gets none of the background sound. So hopefully it sounds decent. Uh, Hopefully I'm still as articulate as before, um, even though we all know that is very much difficult for me to do. (laughs) Anyway, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I hope to have you back in Brendan Moyer's Playwright Corner. Thank you.